Men, gather round. OG7 back here. Hey guys, today I had to make this video, man, before I go to the gym because this is the last day of the year. And I want to share something with you about uh, New Year's resolutions and, you know, failing in the past and not living up to your true potential. Let me tell you something, man. I'm, I'm going I'm to talk to you guys about something that's <clears throat> near and dear to my heart, which is dieting. So just so you guys know, right now I'm at about 258, bro. And um, I can rationalize to myself like, hey, you know, I'm getting more muscle or, you know, I'm starting to hypertrophy or whatever I want to rationalize myself. But here's the true key if you know that you're in shape for your body type. And I want to share this with you guys. And this is a true story. You can take it how you want. A lot of you guys want to rationalize like women, but I'm going to tell you the truth for your specific body type because there's, <coughs> excuse me, there's ectomorphs, mesomorphs, and the endomorphs. Ectomorphs, they just, they, they always rip no matter what. They have a problem gaining weight. They're always ripped, bro. They always got an eight pack. They're just ripped. Mesomorphs, man, they got a six pack, but they just gain muscle very easily. They just get huge. And endomorphs like me, bro, they normally walk around with a one pack. And they're just, I call it big boned. And I'm not big boned, but I got a lot of, I got a lot of fat boy genes from eating a lot of beans and rice when I was a kid. But one thing I know for sure, when, for your, whatever your specific body type is, bro, if you can see your abs, and I'm not talking about you need an eight pack or a six pack, but even if you got a four pack, if you can see your abs, bro, you're in good shape for your body type. So. I can fool myself all day. I can't see my abs, so I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's because of the surgeries or the medication I'm taking or I can't work out like, you know, the five times a day I used to do when I first moved to Vegas. That's how I first lost all that weight. But whatever the case is, man, my weight is up, but I feel very good about it because I'm feeling very powerful and strong. So I wanted to share this with you because um, I, told, I told a good friend of mine this here in Vegas, man, and he was like, he was like, hey, man, why are, you, why, are you, why are you up in the 250s, man, and stuff? Because you say, you know, you eat clean and all this stuff. So I want to tell you guys like this. This is my insider secret. I eat clean like 80% of the time. I follow the Anthony Robbins diet, which is, you know, 80% of the time I eat a lot of fruit and vegetables and salads, bro, and fish, right? Then 20% of the time I might have some chicken or some beef, maybe some pasta and some rice, right? And I share that with you because, dude, sometimes it gets hard to eat like that every day, day. And, like, I'm going to give you an example. On Saturdays, I normally go to the market after I leave the gym and I buy my fish and my vegetables and my salads. And I make my prep my meals for the whole week and I put them. I, I learned this from Corey Everson. If you don't know who she is, she was, like, one of the first Miss Olympias. So I pack all my meals and I put them in the freezer. So when it's time to eat, and I want to just share this with you, I'm giving you some free tips. Don't never say I don't give you nothing free over here. I give you some free tips, but I go way deeper into it on my Patreon and my coaching calls. But what happens is when it's time for me to eat, bro, whether I'm on the road or here or whatever, I grab my stuff out of the freezer <clears throat> and I microwave it. And then I eat it, right? And so – it's called convenience, and that's why they call it fast food. Fast food is really like convenience food, and that's why a lot of guys eat a lot of fast food because it's very convenient for them to just eat it. You know, So if you prep, what I'm trying to say, if you prep your meals or you do a meal prep plan, is, is really good for you. But let me just say, for example, sometimes, bro, it's just like, say I've been eating clean for like five days, bro. And I notice a pattern in myself on the sixth day, bro, I just have a craving, bro. And I noticed that if I have a cheat meal early in the morning, the rest of my day is trash. So sometimes I say to myself, hey, man, you know what? I'm going to have a cheat meal this evening. But, hey, bro, sometimes I get weak and I have a cheat meal in the morning. And here's what's very important I want to share with you guys. If I break down and have a cheat meal in the morning and I fuck off the rest of my day, I make an agreement with myself tomorrow morning when I get up, I'm going to eat clean and I'm going to lock down my consciousness so that nothing distracts me and makes me cheat. And instead of going five days 
I punish myself and I go six days clean. I mean, you can call it punishment. I call it self-discipline. And the reason this is important going to this video, because a lot of you guys think I'll be ranting and raving. And, and for those of you that feel that way, man, honestly, I think you should just unsubscribe, bro. Because as we go into 2023, I only want to fuck with, associate, and hang out with men who think like me. Now, I'm not saying you got to think exactly like me, but I'm saying I want to be around positive men, dude, that are here to get a fucking message and change your life. My channel is about action, man. It's not about sitting around fucking pontificating and entertainment. I'm not here for that, bro. So if you can't sit through the fucking dialogue, bro, to get the character recognition out of it, then skip along, bro, because I'm not, I, I get tired of looking through my um, analytics and see how you guys be skipping all around through, not all you guys, but some of you young guys, man, that's got, got ADHD, because I'm going to tell you something in this life, bro. There is no such thing as immediate gratification. There's not. Like social media might fool you, the government might fool you, fucking internet might fool you, but in real life, the way it works, you got to put in the work even when it hurts. And through consistent effort, bro, consistent and continuous effort, you will reap your rewards. And I say that to you because a lot of times when I do research for my videos, bro, or just research in general, uh, I'm researching the, the Southeast Asia, the countries I'm going to be going to over there. And sometimes, man, people be making these long-ass fucking videos, so I understand. And they just be talking about bullshit. But see, one thing I learned, I'm not a youngster. I'm an OG with whiskers, man. I'm an old dude. I learned that, dude, sometimes you got to sit through the bullshit to get to the good shit. And just like you guys don't know, man, you know, when California was first formed, it was because there was a gold mine. There was gold in them there hills. Dude, sometimes you got to sort through a lot of mud and rocks and dirt to get to one little nugget of gold, bro. And if you don't have stick to and patience, you are never making it in this world. So if you can't sit through my rants, man, just skip along, little poopy pants, because I'm tired. I'm tired of trying to get you guys to sit still. You got to answer your pants. So anyway, I brought that up because, dude, this is the last day of the year. And I think a lot of you guys have New Year's resolutions, and I'm going to help you to be successful with your New Year's resolutions. And how am I going to help you? You start planning it today. You don't wait till tomorrow. You don't wait till, oh, man, after the New Year's party, you know, man, I'm going to be busting up. Getting, hey, Vato, hey, Holmes, we're going to be partying, Holmes. Hey, Wood, man, this is going to be a killer party, man. Yeah. Nah, bro. You start right now, and you clear your day, and you just sit somewhere by yourself. And you think about what you want to accomplish for next year. And you write it down in the journal. Because if you prep your mind tonight, bro, when tomorrow comes, you're going to hit the ground running. So without further ado, man, I want to tell you about the topic of today's video, which is in prison when your celly is king booty bandit. Make a New Year's resolution. He can't bust your cheeks anymore. And I want to tell you guys something, man. Um, first, I want to say Happy New Year to everybody that believes in that. I don't really believe in holidays, you know, not because my dad is Islamic. That's not the point, bro. I've just done a lot of studies about holidays, and I don't need a holiday for me to be who I am. I don't need the government to tell me who I am on a specific day. But for those of you who believe in it, Happy New Year to you. May you have a blessed and prosperous New Year. You know what I mean? And I had to make this video, man, because uh, I wanted to be the first to tell my value subscribers and you guys that come over here watching my channel, I want you to have a happy and prosperous new year. And I want to tell you, this is the appropriate time to get your budget aside and sign up for a $25 coaching call because I'm going to tell you something how corporate America works. They got these things called quarterly evaluations, bro. And they got things called quarterly projections. The first three months of the year is the very most important, guys. You know what I mean? So you want to look at things in 30-day increments, man. So your first 30 days, January, I got a program. You know, I got a program that helps you to focus on your goals for 30 days, bro. And I think the first of January is a good time to start. So for 30 days, you focus on your goals, man. You write down five goals. You focus on those and nothing else. And then at the end of those 30 days, you evaluate, see what goals you accomplished, what you haven't. Then we sign up for another coaching call and figure out where you went wrong, 
or, you know, we all make mistakes because part of being successful is to fail a lot. So the first thing I want to do, I want to tell you guys where the term cheek busting comes from, bro. Everybody's always talking about cheek busting this, busting cheeks, and all this. Where it comes from is when a grown man with a hard baloney pony goes balls deep up in the opening in your rectum, and he busts some nuts, busts them deep up in your cheeks. So he's busting nuts in your cheeks. So they just call it cheek busting. That's where it comes from. So, so for those of you who like that kind of thing, uh, hey, bro, I'm not here to judge you, man, because, you know, I do some crazy shit to women that when I move to Southeast East Asia, bro, <laughs> I'm going to start a new channel. But there's going to be two things that come out of it. First of all, my Patreon is going to get way ramped up because I'm going to show you guys some of my secret techniques that I do on women. It has my cell phone full of women hitting me up. I'm going to also, uh, I'm going to also like give you guys receipts on my phone. I'm going to show you my text messages, pro, and the women that I've been smashing. And then more importantly, I'm going to tell you the secrets that I use when I'm conversate with women here in Vegas, whether it's in person at the gym, the supermarket, bro, the fucking cleaners, the fucking gas station online. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you it all because the reason I couldn't do it here, I try to be respectful of women's privacies to be 304s and sluts and whatever you want to call it. And I've ran through a lot of them. Let me tell you something. Don't, don't kill the messenger. But I couldn't be a dirty, nasty old man if it wasn't for sluts, bro, because, I mean, you can't, you can't have sex by yourself unless you're a fucking incel or you're no true force lonely who masturbates a lot. I'm talking about real sex where you busting nuts deep inside of a woman. You can't do that by yourself. And so without a woman, I couldn't be a dirty, nasty motherfucker, right? So I'm going to tell you guys all the secrets because now that I'm overseas, when I get there, you know, the women, man, um, the reason, I'm going to be honest with you, the reason I didn't do it because I got a lot of women in rotation. So even though I'm in Vegas, I got a, I got about, uh, I don't want to exaggerate, I got about seven women here on rotation and then in California, I got about 20 women on rotation. And they always hit me up. Like, girls always want to have fun. And they always do these girls' road trips. California girls always do these girls' road trips to Vegas. And guess what they do when they come to Vegas, guys? Guess. Go ahead, guess. Hey, man, I'm guessing, OG. Tell me. Hey, man, they hit me up and they say, hey, I'm coming to Vegas with my girlfriends. It's their birthday or they're going to get married or it's their anniversary or it's their reunion, whatever. And I want to see you. And so I want to share with you guys, you non-pussy-getting motherfuckers, what it means when a girl says, I want to see you. It means she wants to be get her back blown out. So anyway, man, I wanted to start this off, man. I wanted to make this video for you guys today. And just so you guys know, you ADHD-type motherfuckers, man, you ants-in-the-pants soft motherfuckers, skip along because this video is going to be kind of long, bro. It's just how it is, motherfucker. And I don't give a fuck no more. I really don't, man. I got too many surgeries to face, too much shit to sell, too much going on in my life to give a fuck about a soft motherfucker who ain't mad enough to sit down at the feet of a master and learn some shit. So anyway, I had to make this video today because I want you, I want you to, I want to help you guys to plan to have a, a happy and a prosperous 2022. And so a lot of people talk this shit on the internet and YouTube specifically. What I've noticed, guys, I want to share this with you. And I'm being honest and I'm not hating. I noticed there's a pattern on YouTube and you guys can disagree all the fuck you want because this is one thing I know for sure. And I'm not picking on any of my value subscribers or the guys that are not trolls or just the cool dudes that I talk to on the phone sometimes. I just want to be honest with you, man. This is what separates me from most people in this world, man. And I'm a very successful guy. So whether you want to define success by money, riches, bitches, or accomplishments, I'm successful in all those areas. And what I'm getting ready to do in Southeast Asia will blow your fucking mind. But this is what I want to share with you, man. There's talkers and there's doers. And one thing I learned, and you know, you might disagree, I never listen to a talker. Like a motherfucker that can talk panties off of none and sell ice to Eskimos and all that shit, bro. I ain't with that, bro. I, w I listen to a doer. Sometimes doers don't have the best vocabulary skills. They're not the best orators. And I'm going to give you an example. And this is just me. You can take it how you want. 
I've noticed that the guys who give out the most heaviest, deepest knowledge on YouTube, like the really, I'm talking about some shit that'll change your life. Their subscriber count is very, very low, and their 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 videos aren't very entertaining. There's not a lot of bells and whistles and powerpoints and and women shaking their ass and all this bullshit. You silly motherfuckers, man. Life is about education, not entertainment, bro. But then I find the people that are the most successful on YouTube, and you can rattle off any names, bro. I'm talking about the most successful with millions of subscribers, hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Their channels are always fucking entertaining and shit and give you a touchy-feely, warm feeling and shit. Hey, bro, I ain't here for that, man. So I don't give a fuck if I never reach a million subs or 100,000 subs, bro, because I figured out the fucking... The algorithm, bro, and I'm not, I'm not a fucking court jester, bro. I'm the fucking, I'm your fucking, uh, I'm your scout, man, when you go to a foreign country or when you're going, to, you're going into battle. There's always a scout, the recon dude. I'm the dude who's going to tell you what's popping and keep you safe. So for those of you who like that kind of shit, fuck with your boy. And for those of you looking for some silly soft shit, man, get the fuck out of here, man. So I want to share with you, man, like, how are we gonna how are we gonna have you have a, a happy and prosperous 2023? The main thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do it by planning for it, dude. Let me tell you something. There's a secret in life. It's called measure twice, cut once. Cause sometimes when you execute a plan and it's a poor poor planning poor planning causes piss poor performance. Let me say that again. Poor planning causes piss poor performance bro and i was talking to uh i was talking to another youtuber man oh let me get back to my point um, i'll just hold this just hold this stop poor planning causes piss poor performance hey bro it'd be a lot of you cats man coming on my channel talking about oh man you know quit dick riding the tates and shit and 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 quit quit reacting to dudes videos and stop talking about booty and all this man check this out this is what i want to say to you guys Unless you have actually started a YouTube channel, man. No, just start it. Just, bro, you can start YouTube for cooking, bro, for cleaning weapons, bro, for talking about your thoughts, bro, for reading poetry, bro, for reacting to music, whatever. YouTube, you got to look at YouTube like Facebook. And for those of you, bro, who don't know about my Facebook page, my original Facebook page, bro, it has so many fucking friends on it. No, I'm talking about my original Facebook page. When I used to be called Rico Gomez, bro. When I was a fucking savage straight out of the penal system, bro. Nah, this is even before I did fucking YouTube. When I was just cage fighting, bro. And I had a, I had a dojo and I was teach training cage fighters. And I was training bodyguards and bouncers. Straight savage. Banging the fuck out of any woman I saw that liked savages. Hey, man, I had so many fucking friends on Facebook I couldn't get anymore, bro. And my, my fucking page was so popular, somebody hacked it. And sent out this message talking about, hey, I'm stuck in Aruba, and I need you to wire me $10,000. And then Facebook thought I was a fucking a scam artist, and they shut my Facebook page down, bro. And the reason I'm telling you that is this, guys. I feel that everybody on here, all of you guys who, whether you follow me, you're here for entertainment, motherfucker, you silly motherfucker, you're here to get educated because you're a real motherfucker. Everybody should have a Facebook page. An Instagram page and a YouTube page. I'm going to tell you why, guys. It's not about fucking likes and clout and all that. It's about journaling, dude, and documenting your life, dude. I don't care what you believe about the hereafter and you're going to heaven to be with Jesus or you're going to be you're going to meet me in hell because I'm a savage or you're going to come back as a turtle or a rock or you're going to fucking transpose with the aliens. I don't give a fuck what you believe because we all going to find out in the end. One thing I do, though, for sure, bro, is journaling is very important because you journal your thoughts, your goals, your aspirations. And Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, dude, is your personal vlog, your video log of your life. Life is precious, man. So you want to document the things that you're doing. It's for two reasons. Number one, you got a historic reference. Dude, I am so sorry that I remember when I was like, when I took uh, fifth place at the heavyweight, the super heavyweight Mr. California, and I, I took second place at the Mr. International Munchen, and I won the Mr. Mites, and I won all these shows and stuff. 
And for t- no, professional photographers used to want to photograph me, but back then they charged money. They charged you money. And I was like, nah, man, don't take my pup photos until I'm Mr. Olympia. Like, I knew in my mind I was going to be Mr. Olympia, but that was before I found out. No offense to anybody. That's before I found out a lot of bodybuilding judges are gay. And if you butt fuck them, they give you a higher ranking in the bodybuilding competitions. Or if you let them suck your wee wee, or you do gay for pay like a lot of these cats do, you get higher rankings. You get back then it was magazine covers and stuff. And once I found that out, I was, and I, hey, hey guys, I don't judge gay people. I'm just, you know, I love women, bro. So, I mean, dudes that like to have dudes go up in their butthole and stuff, I mean, you know, that ain't me. So I don't want to be around those kind of people. I don't judge them, but I mean, if I'm not if I'm not a heroin user, does that mean I judge heroin people because I don't want to be around when you're sticking a needle in your arm and stuff and and you're fucking passing out throwing up? Does that mean I'm judging you? No, I just don't I don't fuck with people like that. So the point I'm making is, until you can make your own you you know man up man, put on your big boy pants, make your own YouTube channel, bro, and you can even you know you can even make it unlisted or private. But see, here's the whole thing. Once you make your own YouTube channel and you see how many views you get and how many subs you get, you will be a very humble dude and you will shut the fuck up and quit trying to tell an OG what the fuck to do. Here's the whole thing. If you're not doing it yourself, how the fuck you going to tell me what to do? That's just how I roll. Now, a lot of people, a lot of older, wise people tell me, oh, man, you know, some people, they can tell you what to do, but they don't know how to do it. I don't listen to those kind of people, bro, and I might be kind of weird because if you can't do it yourself, how the fuck are you going to tell me some shit? you telling me some hypothetical shit. Like, I'm going to give you an example. The other day I was talking to this old dude, and I respect old dudes, homie, but here's the whole thing where separates me from most youngsters, man. I, I give old dudes respect, but when the old dude's trying to tell me some shit that he ain't never done himself, I got to tell the old dude, like, hey, man, I ain't here for no fucking fairy tales. What are you talking about, youngster? Have you ever done it? No, but I just know I, I knew a dude that did it, and I read some books about it, and I watched a movie about it. Man, get the fuck out of here with that shit, bro. Everything I talk to you guys about, I've done it, and this is especially true about me going to Southeast Asia, bro, in the jungles. When you see these videos, you're going to know. And I want to share this with you before I get back to my poor planning portion. There's this movie called Apocalypse Now. And for those of you that really fuck with your boy, like you really believe in me and you see how I'm making a transformation to be a better dude, you follow my journey from being a dude that embellished stories to making movies and videos and shit and and then training in martial arts and going to the jungles to teach people martial arts, bro. There's this movie called Apocalypse Now. It was made in the 80s and it it stars Charlie Sheen and Marlon Brando. It's a classic. And when you watch that movie, I want you to just understand I'm that colonel. I'm the colonel, the, the dude who went crazy, and he's in the jungle now. So I want you to watch that movie because that's what I'm going to be doing over there. So anyway, if, you, if you're not man enough to start your own YouTube channel, bro, and your own Facebook page and your own Instagram and TikTok and start posting to see which, how the, the market reacts to you with views and thumbs-ups and likes, shut the fuck up when you talk to me, dude. Don't talk to me about shit that you ain't actually done or you do. That's why I appreciate it when my boy Charles, shout out to you, Charles, when you give me advice on the stock market. Man, Charles is rocking the stock market. He's making money, bro, and he'd be hitting me up on our consultation calls. He'd be, hey, LG, this is how you got to do this stock, that stock, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Drew, man. He'd be giving me some good information. Shout out to Corey. be giving me some good information what he's doing, Ivan, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Vincent be telling me some nice fucking shit about IT stuff, bro. Stuff that I don't know because he's in a different field, man. He's hitting into all kind of stuff that I ain't never knew about in IT. And he just, I like when people tell me about stuff that they're doing and then tell me how to do it. So anyway, failing to plan is planning to fail, guys. I want to share this with you because a lot of you guys are so busy living in the moment, dude. And I know I know what you're going to go. You're going to say, hey, OG, you said don't worry about the future. Yeah, I said don't worry about the future because you can't change the future. Whatever, but I never said don't plan for the future. Worrying about something is is a is a passive victim type of a mentality. Oh, woe is me! What's gonna happen in the future, dear God? But when you have positive expectations because you plan your future out strategically, like a leader, bro, like a true alpha, bro, then you have positive expectations for the future because you're 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 writing your own ticket, bro. 
you're charting your own path to greatness. So if you fell into if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So the first thing you want to do today, guys, you want to start journaling like me, guys. And you want to write down, man, your top five goals for 2023, bro. I leave I keep it simple. Five, because you got five fingers and five hands. You guys are so used to fucking um choking your chicken with Mary Palmer and her five sisters, bro. <coughs> Use your fucking hand for something positive. Your top five goals for 2023. And then sign up for a $25 coaching call, man, on my Patreon. So before I get into the topic of today's video, I'm very disappointed by some of the comments made on my Andrew Tate videos, man. You guys talking about, oh, you know, uh, Tate's a phony motherfucker. He's at sex trafficking. He's this and that. He's a rapist. He's a kidnapper. That's how he made all of his money illegally. Let me tell you something, guys. See, that's the problem. That's how I can tell you motherfuckers. You're either young or you're sheltered or you're stupid or you're soft. Here's the whole thing. First of all, know your fucking history. No, study the Kennedys, the, the president of the United States back in the 60s when I was kids. John F. Kennedy. Study him and his brothers, his dad. Learn how his dad got his money, you dumb fuck. Once you learn that, bro. There's a lot of people that start out doing illegal things in America. America is a country of illegal savages. And all they do is they come up with these laws so they can, what's it called, um, launder their money. They launder their legal drug, gambling, fucking gangster money. They launder it and then they invest into real estate and clean businesses, bro. So quit judging people, man. Study the Kennedys, how the fucking, the dad Kennedy, how he got his money. When you do that, come back to my channel. Study Donald Trump's dad, bro, how the Trumps got money. Study his dad. The Kennedys got money. The Kennedy dude got money from Prohibition when he used to run moonshine and liquor, bro, before alcohol was legal, bro. That's how he made his money. Trump's dad was a fucking pimp, bro. He had brothels and stuff. So shut the fuck up. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about, man. Look at President Biden's son, bro. You guys need to wake up, man. What I'm trying to say, bro, if, if a man, this is what I learned from a dude, when I grew up in New York, I lived in uh, Harlem. And then uh, when I went to school, I had to pass by this fish market. And this Italian dude asked me to walk his daughter to school every day. You know what I mean? And he, he plainly told me, man, if you go up in my daughter, I'm going to kill you. And I'm going to cut your balls and your dick off. I'm going to shove your dick up your ass. I'm going to cut your eyeballs out. Shove your balls in your eye sockets, bro. And then I'm going to fucking bury you head deep. And the fucking, um, they had a place called Coney Island. Where in the day during the daytime the uh, the waves would come in just to shoreline, but at night it would go over the beach. He said, "I'll bury you in fucking, I'll bury you in the fucking Coney Island, and then the, when the water comes over, you'll suffocate to death, motherfucker." But if you treat her good, I'll treat you good, man. So then he taught me, man. You, he said, "He said, be kind to those who are kind to you. Do good to those who do good for you." So if you remember when John Gotti got indicted for all those murders, bro. Because his, his bodyguard turned state's evidence on him because he's a bitch. If you can't do the crime, don't do the time. Everybody in his neighborhood was like, man, we love John Gotti. Even though they knew he was a murderer and a fucking mass killer and savage. Because he treated those people nice. So what I'm trying to say to you, bro. In this life, young dudes. If you meet a guy who's giving you some positive information that you can take and make it your own and grow. And have a good life, bro. Don't worry about what cats do to other people. I'm not saying dude's guilty or not. That's not the point, bro. You guys are judging him before he's even guilty and you're hating on him, man. So so what if he made money from dude from sex trafficking fucking women, bro? You think he's the only one ever fucking done that in this country, bro? There's a lot of fucking sex trafficking. And I'm not, that's not my argument. What I'm saying is, bro, I'm saying is this, bro. All these women on OnlyFans and doing porn and shit, and you guys support them, you silly motherfuckers. You support these women doing porn channels and OnlyFans, giving them money and these Instagram thoughts, you're thumbing up, liking them in their DMs and shit, bro. That's some sex stuff too, bro. So the whole thing I'm saying is, bro, if this guy made some money doing some illegal things, man, with his casinos and gambling stuff, bro, and then he, he when he, Andrew Tate's a smart guy, bro. What I'm saying is he's smart enough to know to clean his money up. Why would a dude that's worth hundreds of millions and billions of dollars, whatever he's worth, continue to do that type of stuff, bro? 
Here's what I'm thinking is happening, bro. There's a lot of things going on behind the scene. First, he cast them off of uh, social media, bro, which I've never seen that done before. And why? Because he speaks against women because you guys are fucking soft. You let the fucking women in America turn our country into a fucking toilet because you're a soft bitch boy, right? So he speaks against women, man, so they shut him off of social media, right? And then the next thing is since he won't shut up, man, he's back on social media, they make up false lies and charges to lock him up, bro. Because if they can lock dude under the prison, he can't, he can't really say shit no more, man. They can, and then they, they, they tarnish in his name, bro. Dude, this is all constructed, man. They tarnish his name, bro. And then, like you said, the third thing is that they're probably going to kill him. And you guys, you guys got to think, man, when Kevin Samuels died, bro, come on, bro. Hey, man, you guys need to wake up, dude. There's more to this life than what you think. It's more to this life than being entertained and smiley, happy shit, bro. All I'm saying is, bro, start thinking for yourself. Don't go with the narrative, bro. I'm not saying I'm a Tate supporter, but what I'm saying is, bro, to me, he epitomized ultimate masculinity being all that you can be, which is having money, bitches, and power, and not being a fucking soft little flamey little soft boy with butter butt cheeks, right? So that's all I'm saying, bro. Don't be siding with women all the time. Man. Side with your homies. Like, women always, uh, women all, already protect themselves. You ain't got to protect them, man. Side with a dude, even if you don't agree with him, homie, because it's us against them, man. Trust me. So anyway, man, I just want you to wake up and understand that the people in power can do what they want, including false charges, just like women do, bro. So before you want to jump jump on the bandwagon, it's talking about I'm on his nuts and his jock and all this shit, bro. I'm a savage old school dude, bro. You're, you're fucking innocent till proven guilty. And you just got to look at, you think it's a coincidence that they, they banned him from social media. Now they locking him up, bro. Then he probably gonna, he's probably going to end up dead. Come on, man. Wake up, guys. Hey, man, this ain't, this ain't checkers. This is chess. There is more than meets the eye, man, because behind the scenes, there's a lot of skullduggery, man, going on all over the world, bro. And I want to tell you, man, I'm going to tell you the main three reasons I'm moving to Southeast Asia, bro, just so you guys didn't know. Number one. There's something wrong with me, dude. No, seriously. I'm a fucking savage, bro. I think savage thoughts every day. So I got like, let's just say, man, this is the, the devil side, right? And then I got the angel side. Every day the devil's like, man, kill some shit, man. Rip some shit up, man. Maim some shit. And then the angel's like, nah, man. Like soft people, got a, they got a right to live. And you don't want to be locked in the belly of the beast with Big Bubba because you love women, man. So that's number one. I'm savage. I know myself. I want to be around other savage men. I don't want to be like 20% of you soft troll ass motherfuckers talking about I'm on Andrew Tate's dick and he's guilty. And he, oh, I knew, I always knew he was corrupt and all this bitch boy shit. I don't want to, I don't fuck with dudes like you. Like those of you who have been lucky enough to meet me in California and Vegas, man, you, you know the kind of dudes I'll hang out with because wherever we go, you see the kind of dudes be like, what's up, OG? They savages. Wimpy dudes don't even speak to me, homie, because I'm on a whole nother vibe. And I'm not judging you, man, but you soft motherfuckers, stay soft. Because, like, man, this, this old wise dude told me yesterday, he said, dude, if everybody was like you, then you wouldn't be a savage. You'd just be a regular dude. So I'm like when you guys are soft and wimpy. Stay there. Just don't fucking don't come to my channel. Unsubscribe, you soft motherfuckers. So anyway, man, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Number two reason I'm moving to Southeast Asia, bro. Is because you motherfuckers have allowed women to dominate and subjugate you, bro. And I'm not going to get locked up, man. Because, like, the other day, man, I was, um, and it's just an uh, automatic response. But I think I was coming out of the supermarket, or maybe it was Walmart or somewhere with the open doors. And there was a lady coming through. So I'm coming through, and you know how you got to pull the door. So I'm coming through. She's coming through. I just opened the door for her. She's telling me, oh, I don't, I don't. I don't need you to open the door for me. And I was like, I was like, hey, ma'am, I'm just trying to be nice. Don't call me ma'am. Call me they. Like, how dare you not use my pro my pronoun? That's like, look here, they, do, them, it. I don't give a fuck. I was just trying to be a nice human being. Like, fuck you, man. Get the fuck out of my face. Oh, I'm feeling threatened right now. I'll call the fucking cops. Call the fucking cops, you dumb fucking cunt. 
Get the fuck out of here. <coughs> like, dude, like, I'm trying to be nice, bro. You don't got to be fuck. Don't look. Don't try to dominate me because you a soft, bleeding, once a month, little wimpy motherfucking five foot two motherfucker with breastuses that can get cut off. Shut the fuck up, right? And you guys let women just get away. You don't hold women accountable. I was talking to Alaskan Whiskey the other day in, the, in America. You men don't hold women accountable, but yet you want to hold me accountable on some silly shit, bro. Get the fuck out of here. I'm tired of it. And then number three, bro. Here's the third one, dude. The most important one, bro. I'm tired of the rat race, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. I was looking at my finances, bro. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to be transparent. When I was living in Cali, I had a $10,000 a month fucking budget, man, my fucking lifestyle. Now, you know, I can blame, like, half of it on my daughter because she was playing a lot of sports. I was supporting my daughter with a lot of sports and camps and trainers and nutritionists and, and, and uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, dance lessons. Just I wanted my daughter to be like a savage independent as she's going off to college, right? You know, I, I'm not going to put all on her, but then I'm going, I'm, ta- I'm training different martial arts places and stuff, different gyms. I'm taking salsa classes and shit, bro, poetry writing, you know what I mean? But that was a big nut to bust every month, 10000 bro. But then I was making 150000 till Crazy Nick, you know, Crazy Nick and fucking Dirty Weather and them fucking guys, man, fuck my shit off, man. You know, find my real name and contacted corporations I worked for in banks and shit. Told them I was a convicted felon and contacted the fucking Green, the Guardians of the Green Beret trying to lock me up, right? So anyway, I lost all that. And then I was looking at my life and my homeboy told me about Vegas, man. He's like, hey, the cost of living in Vegas is one half. What is in Cali? So just follow me, guys. See, you can learn something, you silly motherfucker. Ass in your pants, always moving around, distracted. So then I, then I moved to Vegas, man. He says half of Cali. So I moved to Vegas, and my lifestyle went from, you know, my nut I got a bus every month went from 10000 to 5000 So I got, a, I got a pretty good life, man, because, you know, 5Gs, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm a bouncer, bro, making $200 a day cash, like undetectable. I'm a personal trainer, bro. Charging 50 bucks an hour, two hour minimum, bro. Life is good, right? Then I find acting school and then I start making movies and stuff. So then I met Alaskan Whiskey and he was telling me, nah, man, Mexico, live in Mexico, man, is one fourth of what it costs to live in Vegas. So check it out. If I'm paying five G's to live in Vegas, but then I could live in Mexico for a thousand a month, man. You know what I'm saying? Or let's say 1500 a month, right? Bro. Let me share something with you young guys, man. I'm not going to talk to older guys because older guys got their own mind. Let me tell you, young guys, something, the secret of life. It's not really, it's good to make money. It's not how much money you make, it's how much you keep. Here's here's a ticket. You want to keep your income high and your overhead low. Let me say that to you again. Income high, overhead low. So now let's just say that crazy stories, Nick and Dirty Weather didn't fuck my 10 G's off a month. Let's say I'm making 10 G's a month. In Vegas, like I was doing in Cali, right? But now my living expenses is 5G's, right? So, bro, I got 5G's to stack in the bank. Stack my chips. Follow me. But I'm not making 10 G's here in Vegas. I make 5,000 a month. I'm just being transparent because money's not my underlying object. It's happiness. So, but follow this. So, let's say I would have moved to Mexico. I'm making 5,000 a month. And my overhead nut I got to bust is 1,000 a month. Bro. Well, let's say 1500 Let's just say I got three Gs, bro. The stack in the bank, bro. That's what you young guys understand. Stack your fucking chips. But here, follow me, man. Follow me. I'm going to get you. I'm getting to the more of the story. In Southeast Asia, bro, the medium income, bro, is $300 a fucking month. So now instead of moving to Mexico for $1,000 a month, I'm in Southeast Asia, man, living off $300 a fucking month, bro. So let's just say, man, you know, the movies are starting to pay me more. But right now, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm, I'm at 5 G's a month. I make 5 G's a month. But wait till the movies start paying me more, bro. This is the whole thing I want to share with you, bro. Let's keep the same 1000 because even though it's, it's $300 a month over there for them people, I've got a custom to living off a thousand in Vegas. So I get over there, I'm living off a thousand. I'm making five thousand a month. So then I'm stacking four G's in the, in the bank, right? 
But just imagine when the movies start paying me more money and I get to making 10000 a month, bro. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't foresee myself becoming a multimillionaire doing movies because I don't have the patience working with these little soft, hot little actresses and their fucking attitudes, you know. Like one time I did this movie, man. And I trained the star of the movie how to do martial arts scenes. Like, I was a fucking executioner on a different planet. And that movie's coming out next year. It's called um, Search for the Deep Star or Deep Space or something. Search for the Deep Star and Deep Space. I don't give a fuck what the name is, man. So it was this little hot white lady. She was sexy, man. They had this hot, like, fucking Persian lady, man. So they had the fight scene with the fucking Martians or whatever the fucking aliens was. So... The stunt coordinator told me, hey, OG, teach them some fight scene, man, how to punch, kick, and then do a judo flip and a roll. So I taught her. I worked all morning with them because they soft, dainty, like, oh, you grabbed me too hard. I can't roll like that, man. And can you get more padding? All this hot girl shit, right? So I spent the whole fucking morning in the sun with these ladies. I don't have makeup. I'm just a fucking stunt dude. Dude, don't you know when the movie came out, we went to the premiere, and I'm standing there. She just walked past me, ignored me, bro. Like, a, and I was like, "Hey, it's so this is me. I've, I've learned to be a politician." I was like, "Hey, it's so nice to see you again." Well, who are you? And I'm with my producer, man. So I gotta be. I can't be my OG savage self. If I was by myself, I'd be like, "The fuck you mean, bitch? I'm the motherfucker taught you how to do the fucking fight scene, you stupid cunt." That's how I talk. That's why I'm moving to a foreign country. But anyway, I'm with my producer, and he'll fire me, bro. And so he, I was like. I'm the guy who spent the whole morning in the hot sun teaching you and the hot Persian lady how to do the fucking punches and kicks. And Oh, hey. What was your name again? My name's OG. Hey, OG. So nice to see you. Okay, and I'm, I'm, I'm into my social media. These are the pictures I'm going to show you guys when I get to Southeast Asia for receipts. I said, hey, you mind if I take a picture with you for prosperity's sake? Look at my fake smile. Fucking dumb cunt. So anyway, man, the point I'm making is this, man. That's the third reason I'm moving over there for economics, bro. It's called demographics. I suggest you guys subscribe to this dude called Expat King. He's an African-American dude from Washington, D.C., bro. he tell you all about finances, digital nomad shit, bro, how to get your money right and start banging these fucking sluts, bro. That's what it's about. So be- let me get back to this here, man. So uh, I had to make this video because over the next few weeks, bro, I'm going to be busy. So this is what happened, bro. I got a brand new car, 2022 Honda CRV. I had a Mercedes Benz, um, a Blue Tech 350 ML Blue Tech, and I did a movie scene in the Mojave Desert. And I got some sand in my fucking exhaust, fucked up my transmission in my Blue Tech, right? So anyway, man, they wanted uh, eight thousand dollars to fix it. I contacted my bank, and they they wanted twelve thousand. Took out a loan for twelve thousand, paid that off. Then I took out another loan, bought this. $38,000 Honda CRV, but I didn't know I was moving to the fucking Southeast Asia. So anyway, I tried to sell it. Everybody's offering me 25000 So what I did was I found out I could ship my car open for 5Gs, and then, but I got to put it in storage, right? So I had to get my whole, I had to get a new registration, had to take it registered from California and Vegas for $730. I'm sharing this with you because I did all this stuff. I got stuff going on. I got medical appointments. So then all the next couple of weeks, I got to go over to the storage place because I found a storage place because, the guys, I don't have 5Gs right now to ship my car because I had to get my plane ticket, had to get my fucking transportation, Southeast Asia, had to do all kind of fucking shit, bro. So anyway, I found a car storage place that I got to store it, man, for 150 a month. And then after I get to Southeast Asia, I've been there for about six months. I got the 5Gs, then I'm going to have them ship my car over. So I got to do that. And all next week, I got to get my prostate surgery done. I got, I'm got i having kidney failure, bro, from years of anabolic steroids. I got to go to the kidney doctor and see what the fuck's going on with that. So I got shit going on, man. So I don't know, guys. And in between, man, packing up my stuff and selling items, and then I got to walk through the house with the landlord so I can turn in the keys, man, because my lease is up. I don't think I'll be able to upload videos to Patreon or YouTube, but maybe like twice a week, bro. Before I was before I was doing like four or five videos a day, I'm not going to be able to do that, guys. So I'm just being proactive and letting you know. But 
I just wanted to tell you guys, man, hang in there with your boy, because when I get to Southeast Asia, bro, I'm be showing all my women receipts. And the reason I'm doing it is for two reasons. Number one, like 20% of you guys come over here and be talking about, oh, just something, all you talk about is butt and booty and rape and shit, man. And you gay, man. You got your butt cheeks split and all that. You a homo, right? Hey, man, you need to shut the fuck up. Because first of all, number one, dudes that got their butt cheeks taken don't talk about it. Trust me. They don't want to bring it up at all. And number two, bro, I'm just telling you the facts of maximum security prison with life is my story as I experienced it. Before. So what your homeboys telling you, what they lying to you, blowing smoke up your cool old homes, whatever it is, Vato, that's on them. I'm telling you my stories because I want to help you to help me. So the more I talk about it, I clear my demons out because when you step, you keep stuff hidden inside, it just percolates, bro. So I want to show my receipts because, bro, it's like, also, I want to be, like, helping young dudes to understand the, the matrix and dealing with women, bro, and all this trying to learn PUA game. I'm going to tell you how to find your archetype and be congruent so you can just get women. And back to what I tell you, I don't like guys that don't haven't done something tell me how to do it. So the same way, you guys want receipts so I can tell you what I know about the fucking thousands of women I've slain, bro? I'm going to show you fucking receipts to them because seeing is believing – and then you'll open your mind up, and then when you see what my new channel's going to be about, you're going to know for sure OG knows about slaying women, bro. But I'm going to show you the receipts because it might take me a minute to learn the languages over there and get the women comfortable being on camera and all this stuff, man. You know, foreign cultures and foreign customs. I got to fucking learn the, the culture first before I can get women comfortable on camera and me talking to them about dating and stuff. So <coughs> that's why I'm going to show you my receipts about the American women. So you guys would be like, what the fuck? Oh, Jesus, savage, because I'm a savage for real. And plus, if Brittany Renner and Superhead can do it, hey, man, why not me, man? Fuck it. They, 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 they're giving receipts on all the guys they've been with, so I'm going to get the receipts on all the women I didn't slept with, man. So I wanted to tell you something, man. In this movie called Penitentiary, there was this dude named Jesse. This is a big black dude. He was the king booty bandit. And he was banging this little light-skinned dude. I forget the dude's name is, but just so you know, guys, here in, in the Western United States and probably all over the world, there's a thing called colorism. And uh, dark-skinned dudes, for some reason, think light-skinned dudes are soft. And I guess maybe light-skinned dudes are soft. I don't know. I don't really hang out with a lot of light-skinned dudes. I mostly hang out with a lot of Asian dudes right now and Russian dudes, man. You know what I mean? And Puerto Rican dudes. So I don't really know. I mean, I got a few African American friends, but I don't. I'm not into the whole homeboyism and colorism thing. But anyway, in the African American culture, dark skinned dudes for some reason think they're more savage than light skinned dudes. Maybe they are. But in this movie Penitentiary, the King Booty Bandit is this brown skinned dude named Jesse. He's the King Booty Bandit, and he's banging the crap out of his light skinned dude's butt cheeks every night. He's like, "Get it ready!" And light skinned dude's like, "Ah." Jesse's like, hey, what I tell you? And he beats him up. He's like, oh, 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 shit. And he goes to sleep, and the dude's all in the fetal position with his butt cheek split open with fucking jism coming out of his butt crack like a soft little female, right? So anyway, man, in the movie, the light-skinned dude decides one day, you know, because Two Sweets in his ear, like, hey, man, you, you can fight back too, man. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? And Two Sweets teach him how to box. mm 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 mm, -mm. And Jesse can box, too. So then here's the irony of the movie. In the movie, Jesse tells him, hey, get it ready. Like, I don't want to get it ready. Jesse goes, didn't I tell you to get it ready? And then Lysi like, like, hey, man, I got a pair, too. And you know what? We can fight this motherfucker all night. And, motherfucker, you got to sleep, too. So in the movie, to make you guys feel good, you got a touchy feely like, hey, man. Like a lot of you guys make your comments. Hey, man, if I stand up for myself and fight back, would that stop me from getting my butt cheeks? Split open, and then I see guys in the comments talking about, yeah, man, as long as you stand up for yourself, they see you ain't no punk, man. You know what I mean? Your cheeks are safe. Okay, bro, I'm going to tell you, like, the stories. I'm going to tell you my fucking reality. It don't matter if you stand up and fight back, bro. If you ain't got skill, motherfucker, and you ain't a killer, they're going to take your cheeks, bro. They'll just beat your ass, knock you out, go up in, ooh, ow, ooh, and then you wake up, what the hell? Knock you out again, ooh, ow, ooh, ow, and wait until your butt cheeks, you got a fucking prolapse. <clears throat> if you don't know what a prolapse is, look it up, you non-educated motherfuckers. So anyway, man, 
in the movie, Jesse leaves him alone just because Light can do go, hey, man, I got a pair too, man. We'll fight all night, this motherfucker. And you got to sleep too, man. Fuck that. And Jesse's like, oh, man, fuck you. I'm like, yeah, okay, man. That's not reality, man. So here's the, here's the reality. I'm going to tell you like this, bro. Hey, Vato, if you go to the Pinto homes and you can't fight, you're not a savage like me, like you ain't got skills, dude, then you got to get you a fucking candy bar, man. You got to handle your business, man. But let's say you're a soft, wimpy boy, and you just now find my videos, but you and your, your booty bandit, your, your Sally's King booty bandit, he's busting your cheeks every night, balls deep, so bad you can't even poop regularly without it hurting, right? This is what I made this video for you for. Your New Year's resolution, if you in the boot, if your celly is a booty bandit and he's a lifer and you guys are in maximum security prison, he ain't never getting out, bro. And you made the mistake of letting him go up in your butt cheeks and you're fucking sucking him off and swallowing his cum like you're a little fucking female, right? This is what I want to tell you, man. This is what's great about New Year's. You got a new chance to start anew. So this is what you must do, bro. You must go. And find a dude who is the candy bar maker. And I'm just doing slang for YouTube because I'm trying to get monetized, which I don't get monetized a lot. But candy bar is slang for a fucking, for a knife, home, For a question, home. You know what I mean? Candy bar is slang for this. So you find the candy bar maker, man. And you're paying whatever you got to pay him. And since you're already giving up your culo, even if you got to give your culo up to this dude to get so you can get this here. And then for your New Year's resolution, when the King Booty Bandit comes up to you talking about, hey, man, get it ready. You got to make a New Year's resolution that he shall not be busting your cheeks anymore. And the way that you got to start your New Year off with a bang is you got to take your cueta. And you take it, man, and you shove it so far up into his ball sack, bro, as you rip up into his stomach, bro, and then you elbow him into his face, and you tell him, you shall not bust my cheeks anymore. And then when you're in the shoe program, you want to go ahead, man, and think about your goal that when you come out of the shoe, nobody will be able to do that to you.